Hey everybody, happy holidays, hope you're doing well and staying warm. Today let's revisit SARMs, or at least one of the things that many think is a SARM, but in fact is a bit different. Yes, I won't keep you waiting, you've seen the title, let's talk about Carterine, which is also known as GW501516, a product developed in the late 90s and throughout the early 2000s through collaboration of a couple pharmaceutical players, namely GlaxoSmithKline or GSK and Ligand Pharmaceutical. Pharmaceuticals. And although it's known popularly as a SARM, it's in fact a peroxisome proliferator activated receptor delta agonist, or simply put, a PPAR delta agonist. It's highly selective for this hormone receptor, which is expressed pretty widely throughout the body in skeletal muscle, fatty tissue, the liver, and throughout the cardiovascular system. Most compounds that interact with PPAR touch its alpha and gamma receptors, and so the design of Carterine was intended to hit relevant metabolic pathways, but without off-target effects that are common to drugs that fall within a similar class. But with this novel mechanism of action comes a severe, unintended, controversial risk, which we'll get into as well. Now let's get a little more detailed here, because if I want you to take anything away from my channel, it's gaining a better understanding of how these popular compounds work, which I know can oftentimes be obscured by people just stating their results. So when Carterine binds that PPAR delta receptor. It induces a conformational change or a structural shift that allows the receptor to heterodimerize or pair up with another called the RXR, the retinoid X receptor. So what that leaves us with is a PPAR delta RXR complex that can interact with genetic material. This newly formed complex then binds with factors called peroxisome proliferator response elements or PPREs of target genes. This ultimately ultimately leads to increased expression of genes involved with fatty acid transport, fatty oxidation, and energy uncoupling, while decreasing genetic expression of others involved with glucose utility and fat accumulation. In muscle, this binding results in increased mitochondrial fatty acid uptake and oxidation, which in preclinical models has shown a preference towards increased features of metabolism, favoring fat utility rather than glucose, and with that, possible increases in endurance. In other words, it prompts cells to give a lower priority to glucose and prioritize burning fat for fuel. Like other compounds we've talked about on the channel, this is why it was considered an exercise mimetic, because in a sense, administering the drug replicates metabolic adaptations you'd see with physical training, specifically increased mitochondrial activity and fat utilization, and on top of its interaction with genetic material, it's been seen in cardiac tissue to improve heart contractility without increasing heart rate. So what's this translate to in rodent findings? Generally speaking, a protective effect against obesity and metabolic dysfunction. This can be seen by reduced lipid content in muscle and in the liver, as well as improved insulin sensitivity and improved exercise endurance. And these positive changes weren't only seen in animals, as in humans there were favorable effects on lipid profiles and triglycerides. So we've got a few clinical trials worth mentioning for completeness. The first of which was in 2007. Carter was looked at in a smaller study of healthy volunteers at different dose ranges for two weeks while they were in a hospitalized setting. What was seen most prominently in the 10 milligrams per day group were reductions in LDL, low-density lipoprotein colloquially known as bad cholesterol, alongside a decrease in triglycerides and an increase in HDL, high-density lipoprotein, the protective form of good cholesterol. In another study of moderately obese men, carterine was compared to a PPA are alpha agonist. Remember, this is a delta. And while the alpha didn't show metabolic changes, carterine produced similar findings. Decreased triglycerides, LDL, apolipoprotein B, and insulin with a unique finding of a 20% reduction in liver fat content. In this instance, HDL, however, remained unchanged. Another trial in 13 dyslipidemic men with central obesity, carterine was evaluated at 2.5 milligrams per day versus placebo for six weeks with a crossover phase, and in this we saw decreased plaque
plasma triglycerides, non-esterified fatty acids, and cholesterol in what are called remnant-like lipoproteins, which are precursors to LDL. There was also an increase in HDL that was seen demonstrating the lipid-regulating effects of the drug. This last clinical trial was on a much larger scale, in a couple hundred participants, and carterine was given to patients with low HDL levels, and what they saw were increased HDL levels, as well as apolipoprotein A, which is a protein within HDL responsible for its protective effects. And there were additionally favorable effects on LDL, VLDL, which is very low-density lipoprotein, triglycerides, and free fatty acids, with the most robust results seen in the 10 mg per day group. Generally speaking, throughout these clinical trials, carterine was seen to be safe and well-tolerated, which is accurate for short-term utility. Where preclinical animal data drew concern is through the very popular talked-about risk towards cancer. Long-term carcinogenicity studies noticed a marked increase in the incidence of a variety of tumors in animals that had been treated with carterine. They were found in the liver, stomach, bladder, thyroid, skin, and other organs, which together emphasize a strong and broad cancerous potential associated with agonism of the PPAR delta receptor. The mechanistic hypothesis here is that hitting this receptor induces cell proliferation alongside inhibition of apoptosis in certain contexts. This means it prevents programmed cell death that's appropriate and serves as a protective factor against cancerous formation typically. It's also been seen to upregulate VEGF receptors, which we've talked about quite a bit on the channel, vascular endothelial growth factor, which contributes to angiogenesis geogenic potential, new blood vessel formation, which is typically characteristic of cancer as well as growing tumors and metastasis requires blood flow and oxygenation. And some data also notes, and additional data note that there's increased expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines with administration, creating a more inflammatory physiologic state. Now, while PPAR-alpha and PPAR-gamma agonists are generally considered anti-tumorigenic, PPAR-delta activation has shown pro-tumorigenic effects in multiple rodent cancer models. Carterine, in particular, is the compound that's used in these studies to demonstrate widespread cancer development. And so this was analyzed inversely, where mice without PPAR delta expression showed decreased tumor growth when administered carterine. But like with most things that show a bit of promise and light of concern, and most things we actually discuss on this channel, of course there's controversy. And although I try not to incite chaos, these discussions often do. But the core of the debate from the pro-carterine team lies in the lack of published histopathology intended to take a closer look look at cancer cells, alongside differences in PPAR delta expression among different species, and the fact that not all human cell lines evaluated showed cancerous proliferation. Not to mention in human trials, cancer wasn't an observed outcome, however we've got to consider the lack of long-term observation. That said, we don't see any case reports either of carterine use equating to tumor formation. So although the concerns are in my opinion quite clear, there may be more to the story than meets the eye, and due to GSK's understanding understandable discontinuation of research after these findings, it's clear why it'll likely stay that way. So in my humble opinion, when weighing the risks and the benefits, there's quite a concern about the former that, especially given contemporary lipid lowering and weight loss options of today, makes, in my opinion, a logical decision when it comes to use quite clear cut. Obviously, there are consistently seen pros, altered lipid parameters, improved insulin resistance in some instances, enhanced fatty acid metabolism, and perhaps even heightened endurance. But what comes with that is a controversial, yes, but also not fully elucidated risk, which is worth being aware of and keeping strongly in mind. We can't say for sure that in humans, carterine causes cancer or it doesn't, which is the ambiguous gray nature of the compound and its current state and a huge factor worth weighing in my mind. So I hope you found this helpful. I wanted to change topics a little bit, shy away from peptides for one, discuss an interesting PPAR Delta agonist. And so let me know your thoughts in the description below. What have you heard about carterine? What do you feel about it? If you do enjoy this sort of evidence-based content, please give me a like and subscribe. It's the best way to help a small, mostly peptide YouTuber out. And like I said earlier, I hope you have a happy holidays. Hope everyone is doing well, and I really appreciate the time. If you're looking for a further way to support the channel, I'll leave a description to the Patreon in the link below so you can check that out and join if you feel so inclined. But most importantly, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you soon. Take care.
Cut to the chase, evidence-based Pull up a chair, let's get this straight Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy